Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Margaret O'Brien, Charles Lawton, and Tom Drake in The Canterville Ghost. Ladies and gentlemen, your guest producer, Mr. Hunt Stromberg. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe you've heard that story of two ghosts indulging in a bit of phantom conversation. One turned to the other and asked that question that has troubled ghosts since time began. Do you believe in people? We bring you tonight the story of a ghost who cherished very little confidence in people, and even less faith in himself. The legend dubs him one of England's most spectacular phantoms. Charles Lawton plays the title role in Metro Goldwyn Mayer's comic fantasy. The Canterville Ghost. Co-starred with Mr. Lawton is an actress still young on the vine, and shortly to be starred in MGM's Our Vines Have Tender Grapes. Seven-year-old Margaret O'Brien, winner of this year's Academy Award. Also in our cast is Tom Drake, who, as Cuffy Williams, finds himself billeted with an American expeditionary troop in the ancient castle of the Canterville, where what transpires may sometimes challenge your belief at the same time that it sparks your risibility. While the setting of our play is wartime England, America has had its share of ghosts too. In fact, there was a time when it was considered a safe precaution to dunk all suspicious characters in water. If they stayed under, they were innocent of harboring anti-social spirits. Well, we'd hardly tolerate such laundering in our present day society. Unless, of course, we added Lux Flakes to the process. Give Lux Flakes a ghost of a chance, and you'll never work yourself into a skeleton with old-fashioned methods. Nor will your nice things ever wear that haunted look. As we lower the lights in our theater, we suggest you do the same at home, and draw up a chair to hear the first act of The Canterville Ghost, starring Margaret O'Brien as Lady Jessica de Canterville, Charles Lawton as Sir Simon, and Tom Drake as Coffee Williams. <laughs> Authorities on the subject of phantoms declare that the most fearsome ghost in all the British Isles is that of a somewhat overweight nobleman named Sir Simon de Canterville. Haunting Canterville Castle for 300 years, this portly apparition has been unique for its shrewd sense of showmanship and its spectacular variety of stunts, shapes, and sound effects. The ghost originated in 1634 when Sir Simon was scheduled to fight a duel. He took one look at his fierce and towering opponent and ran away from the field of honor in a startling display of speed and cowardice. He was chased to his father's castle by his frustrated opponent, Sir Valentine. Where is he? Where is the cowardly poltroon? Sir, what means this violation of my hall? Lord Canterville? I? I am Sir Valentine of Bolton Manor. Your son, Sir Simon, having accepted my challenge, fled before my sword. Fled? You lie, Sir Valentine. My honor has been twice offended. I demand that the fat coward faces me. You are new to these parts, Sir Valentine, or you would know that cowardice in a Canterville is like snow in July. Every Canterville bears on his neck the Canterville birthmark. It is the badge of valor. The Cantervilles are the bravest men in England. So call off your hounds and leave these halls. Fine words, my lord, but it seems the hounds have found their quarry. That room there. Why is the door closed, and why do my hounds leap upon it? No son of mine cowers behind a door. No? Then my lord can have no objection to sealing up the door with stone and mortar? I certainly can. I have too great a regard for my house. For your house, my lord, or for your son? Childs, Thomas, fetch the stonemasons. Tell them to bring their brick and mortar. One more stone, Sir Valentine, and the room is sealed. Are you satisfied? Aye. And you still think my son is in that room? If he's a coward, why is he not called? He is a coward. Father, father! Ah, he finds his tongue at last. Masons, stop. I heard nothing. Continue, Mason. Seal up the wall. Father, father! It is Simon, thy son. My lord. There's no one in that room. Put in the last stone, I say. Put it in. Father, father! 
It is I. But, my lord, t'was only meant in jest. Leave my house. Aye, but tis thy son thou hast entombed there. And you, Masons, get you hence. I mean, lord, I... <laughs> Simon de Canterville, full well I know it is thou behind this masonry. But because thou hast dishonored thy proud blood, that room shall be thy tomb. When thou art dead, may thy craven spirit walk the halls of Canterville Castle until a kinsman shall wear thy signet ring and perform for thee the brave deed thou didst fail to do. So did Sir Simon die, and so was born the Canterville ghost. Now it's 1942. Canterville Castle stands silent and deserted, inhabited only by a slightly tired but still fearsome phantom. The only remaining Canterville is Lady Jessica. She and her aunt find living less disturbing in a modest cottage on the castle grounds. Lady Jessica is seven years old. Auntie, Auntie, I just saw him. I just saw the ghost. The ghost, dear? Where? On the roof of the castle. Oh, that was the tinsmith, darling. He's mending the water spouts. We're turning the castle over to some American soldiers. American soldiers? Mm, rangers, I believe they're called. Like our commandos. But good gracious, Auntie. Can they live in the castle when it is haunted? Your family did, darling, until 20 years ago. Excuse me, men. Oh, yes, Potter. Everything's ready at the castle. We were wondering about tea, ma'am. Oh, of course. I'll be there shortly. Yes, ma'am. You're going, Auntie? Certainly, dear. They'll be our guests. Noblesse oblige. But, Auntie, you're not well. Remember what the doctor said? Well, perhaps I shouldn't. Auntie, what does it mean? Noblesse oblige? Oh, it's just an expression, darling. But what does it mean? Well, noblesse oblige is French. Those of us who are nobly born must prove ourselves worthy by being kind and thoughtful of others. So, when guests arrive, we must see that they enjoy their stay. Auntie, those Americans, will there be cowboys and Indians? Mm -hmm. Some of them, I dare say. What does one do to make Indians welcome? Jessica, you're not going to the castle. Well, someone should greet the soldiers. But aren't you afraid of the ghost? Oh, yes, Auntie. And you still want to go? Well, I really should. It's my castle. Noblesse oblige. It starts when you're born, doesn't it? <laughs> Run along then, darling. The Americans should be there now. And don't worry, Auntie. Ghosts almost never come out in the daytime. Hanson! A tune accounted for, Lieutenant Kane. I get this. As long as you men are in this castle, you're to conduct yourselves like gentlemen and respect this property. Get a good night's sleep. You'll need it. If you want me, Sergeant Benson, I'll be at headquarters in the village. Yes, sir. As you were. Hey, now, that's my chair, Coppy. I was Sorry, just Jordan, say... I'm consolidating this uh... position. Well, not bad. <laughs> Pup tents are okay for the hoi polloi. Me, Coppy Williams, I prefer the comforts of the castle. An easy chair, a cozy fire. Take your big feet off that table, Williams. Where do you think you're at? Canterville Castle, one of England's most impressive estates. I beg estates. pardon. Shall I serve tea now, gentlemen? Tea? tea. Huh? After your journey, you may be a bit done in. Well, uh... Okay, then. Uh, thanks. Very good, sir. Now, listen, fellas. It says in the book here that when you're in England, you've got to act the way they do. If they say tea, you drink it. Excuse me, gentlemen, but Lady Jessica would like to say good evening. Oh, well, well tell her we'd be honored. Very good, sir. Now, lady, what do you say to a dame that's a lady? Do you have to kiss her hand? Now, watch it. Lady Jessica de Canterville. Good evening, gentlemen. Holy smoke. It's a midget. No, it's a half pint. How do you do? I want you to all know I'm glad you're here. And I do so hope you'll enjoy your stay in my castle. Well, uh, uh, yeah, my yeah, lady, may uh, I say on behalf of my compatriots that we're very grateful for your hospitality. Yeah, likewise. Thank you, gentlemen. You'll uh, excuse the fellas, I hope. I, uh, uh, we thought Lady Jessica was a... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I, uh, I thought a girl had to be married before she was a lady. Oh, dear, no. A lady is a lady when she behaves like one, my auntie says. Which one of you are Indians? Huh? Oh, <laughs> oh, that tall fellow, Trigger, he's an Indian. Oh, to which tribe do you belong? He's a Hoboken Indian. <laughs> I don't believe I've ever read about that tribe. <laughs> Please serve, gentlemen. Oh, of course. Will you pour, my lady? Thank you, Mr. Uh... Uh, Williams, Private Coffee Williams. 
I shall be happy to, Private Williams. This way, gents. Would anybody like some more tea? No, 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 no. Who did that? Come on, now. Who did it? Who did what, Sergeant? Who made that spot on the rug? Who spilt the tea? Speak up. Oh, that's not tea, sir. It ain't? No, sir. Nothing will remove that spot. It's blood. blood. Quite so. And the blood of Lady Barbara Moody. She stabbed herself in the throat when she saw him. Him? Uh, who was him? Sir Simon, our ghost. Your wow. ghost, did you say? Oh, yes. He's quite the most famous ghost in England. And he lives here in this castle. Now, wait a minute. Well, if you don't want me to tell you about it... Oh, but we do. Now, give the lady a chance, fellows. If she says her castle is haunted... Well, who are we to quibble? It may sound irregular to you, but I have seen the ghost myself. No fooling. That's the door to his bedchamber behind that tapestry. Isn't it, Mrs. Potter? Aye. He was walled up in there centuries ago. Holy catfish. Oh, well, that's awful. Yes. And every night now on the stroke of twelve, his spirit walks the halls. Searching for a kinsman with the birthmark of the Cantervilles. Oh, oh, gentlemen. Beware. I shouldn't tell you this before bedtime, but the Dowager Duchess of Stutfield was found one night on her balcony, stock staring mad. There's the loveliest picture of her gibbering like an idiot. Oh, you don't say. Well, that's awful. And Lady Margaret Bilton, she drowned herself in the fish pond. Do you know why? No. No. Because there he was again with long green fingers twitching with palsy and his eyes burning like coal. The bloodsucker of Bexley Moor. Bloodsucker? Didn't I tell you, fellas? Who are we to quibble? What is your name, please? Cuffy Williams. Well, Cuffy Williams, I know right well that you've been laughing at me. Oh, no, my lady. But just you wait until midnight. <laughs> It's 12 o'clock. Oh, uh, so what? Oh, nothing. Boy, this bunk's hot. I can't get to sleep. Well, fill out a complaint and mail it to the colonel. Hey, Cuffy, do you think there's anything in this ghost business? Oh, for crying out loud. Pipe down, you guys. I said pipe down. That ain't us, Sarge. Sounds like somebody dragging ash cans around. No, it's chains. Hey, look. The light on the stairs. Hey, look, fellas, it's taking shape. It's the ghost. Oh, oh, it's, look, look, it's him. It's her Simon. <laughs> I am the ghost of Sir Simon de Canterville. Did you ever see a man slice of his own head? Observe. <coughs> it's off. A head without a body, a body without a head. <coughs> now it's on. <coughs> now it's off. <coughs> now it's on again. Yeah, it's on, but you put it on backwards. <laughs> oh, did I? Excuse me. <coughs> Is this better? Ah, uh, scram, dribble boys. <laughs> take care, take care. Take care, I am. Fellas, I'm going to let them have it. <laughs> well, let's face it, Sarge. That was a real ghost. Yeah, yeah. I don't believe it, but I see he comes back. We've got to scare him again. Scare a ghost? That's right, and this time scare him good. Now listen, you put on our gas mask, take the sheets and wrap... Company, get in, Chins. Morning, men. Morning, Morning sir. Good morning. Well, from now on, we're officially attached to British commandos. We're going to celebrate with a 10-hour endurance hike. Forced marching rate eight hours, double time last two. Oh, oh, no. What's the matter with the men, Sergeant? Uh, sir, uh, I'm afraid they uh, didn't sleep so good last night. Oh, why not? Well, uh, uh, maybe it was, uh, well, you know how it is, a, a strange place. Yeah. Jordan, is that what kept you up, a strange place? Oh, oh, no, sir. What kept me up was seeing the ghost. Wasn't it, Eddie? Uh, yes, sir, that's right. You saw a ghost? Oh, you should have seen him, sir. He cut off his own head. We shot at him, then we put on sheets and gas masks and scared him away for good. I hope. All right, Sergeant. What really kept him up last night? 
Well? It was the ghost, sir. Ghost, huh? Phone the platoon. I guarantee the men will sleep tonight. Yes, sir. All in. Williams, where'd you get that limp? Oh, it's nothing, sir. I was just running up the stairs. Chased by the ghost? Oh, no, sir. I was chasing him. Well, you can chase yourself right back into that castle and spend the next ten hours sweeping the floors. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> Well, well, hello there, lady. Oh, it's you. Well, who did you think it was? I, oh, no one. I was just bringing these onions into the pantry. Really? Then why did you take that great circle route? Um, oh, Auntie thought the mess sergeant might like some onions. I'm a brownie, and brownies raise onions. Oh, come now, you were afraid I was a ghost. Well, what if I was? Well, he's nothing to be afraid of. Didn't he come last night? Sure, and we chased him right up the chimney. Oh, you didn't. Oh, you think I'm kidding, huh? Well, we'll ask old Foxy Grandpa himself. Who? The ghost. Oh, that won't be necessary. Now, uh, let's see. This is the door to the room that's walled up, isn't it? Mm, pretty solid. Hey, Grandpa, open up! Oh, what do you know? It wasn't locked. Oh, oh no, please. Auntie's expecting me home. Oh, come on over here. Come on. That's right. Now, look, you you just pretend you're not afraid and you won't be. That's all there is to it. Are you sure? I'll prove it to you. Come on. Hey, ghost, where are you hiding? That must be where he was walled up. Mm, those bricks look loose. Maybe I could find a hand. Well, what do you know? Look. What? Over there on top of the mantel, Sir Simon. He's sitting on a mantle. Must you invade even my tube? Will there be no place I could call sanctuary? What are you doing up there? Tried to keep out of drafts. I've got a slight head cold. <laughs> well, drift down here. There's someone I want you to meet. I have already met your colonial ruffians. They pursued me through the halls like ghosts. Humans. Now, nobody's going to hurt you, Grandpa. I want you to meet Lady Jessica. Sir Simon the Ghost. The lady. How do you do? Not at all well, thank you. Uh, <coughs> Bless you. Oh, that a girl. Oh, she's been scared stiff of you. And I just wanted to show her you wouldn't hurt a flea. Sir, my record speaks for itself. An unbroken reign of terror through three centuries. Well, record or no record, as long as her ladyship's around, you've got to behave yourself. It is absurd asking me to behave myself. Quite absurd. I must rattle my chains and groan through keyholes. I must gibber from the oriel window on the first and third Wednesdays of every month. It is my solemn duty to haunt these halls. Uh, that's a lot of ectoplasm. Well, Cuffy, he's the family ghost. American's child. What can a people without ancestors know about ghosts? Now, wait a minute. You never heard of the, uh, the headless horseman? Or Red Grange the galloping ghost? Or uh, Mrs. Pruneface? Provincial stuff. Spirits with neither crest nor title. Titles? Well, what about Count Basie, Duke Ellington, the King of Swat? Nobility and a democracy, balderdash. What's your Simon? We've had democracy here in England ever since the Magna Carta. Madam, I have never chosen to recognize it. But you should, Sir Simon. That's what we're fighting this war about. That's the stuff, my lady. You see, you're not afraid of bed. Oh. Now that you two Cantervilles are acquainted, you must have a lot of family matters to gab about. So I'll get on with my cleaning. You sure you're all right, m'lady? Yes, thank you. I'll see you later. Unless you're Simon, you'd rather be alone. Oh, no, no, please. Pray sit down. I forgot my manners. Well, if I may say so, you could have been a little more polite to Cuffy just now. After what he and his band of hooligans did to me, I may have very little else. But I still have my pride. But you frighten them. I must frighten people. I have a reputation to uphold. The most fearsome phantom in all England. Cuffy told me that they chased you up the chimney last night. That's because they wore those ghastly masks and shrouds. Lady Jessica, I can pretend no longer. Since last night, it is I who am frightened. I who tremble at the slightest noise. Oh, you poor, poor ghost. Do you know what it means to be a ghost? 
to live in emptiness between heaven and earth with nothing for company but bitter memories. But do you have to keep on being a ghost? I am condemned to be a ghost until a kinsman performs a brave deed in my behalf. If I could only rest. If I could only die. Oh, to be buried in the soft brown earth in the garden beyond the pine woods. To have no yesterday and no tomorrow. Oh, dear. I wish I could do a brave deed for you. How's it go, lady? Oh, fine. Sorry to bust this reunion up, but the Louie will be back in a minute. Goodbye, Sir Simon. And I'm very happy to have met you. Milady. Cuffy, I think you ought to tell your friends not to chase him up the chimney anymore. Well, that depends on him. But he's so old and sleepy. Hey. Oh! Hey, take it easy. I stumbled on my shoelace. It's untied. Well, stand still. I'll tie it for you. Cuffy. Huh? What's that on your neck? That oh, that's, mark. That's just a birthmark. Hey. Hey, where are you going? There's something I've got to tell Sir Simon. It's very important. I've got to tell him. Sir Simon. Sir Simon. Are you back so uh, <coughs> soon, my lady? Cuffy, Cuffy has a Canterville birthmark on his neck. What, that American ruffian? He must be a Canterville. Isn't that wonderful? Well, Gad, if he be a Canterville, shall I prance around joyously like a saucy antelope? But, but if Cuffy is a Canterville, and if he does a brave deed for you, he can save you, can't he? Can it be that they have concealed from thee why I am still here? Dust fancy it is merely because I cannot find the kinsman. Well, I've overheard Mr. Potter say that all the Cannavilles always turn out to be cowards. But that isn't true, is it? Cowards? Gross flattery. Had they twice the courage, it would only give them half the name. Sir Simon. Thy grandfather, would he mount a horse? Thy father, so fearful of water that he trembled in his bath. Or thyself swooning at the mere sight of my shadow. Really, now, it's your family, too, Sir Simon. Only too well do I know it. But Cuffy can save you. I know it. Mm. It isn't true that all Cannavilles have to turn out to be cowards. I was a coward, wasn't I? I was frightened to death of you. And now look at me. I'm not afraid of you in the least. Oh, don't you see, Sir Simon? Nay, nay, it is in the Canterville blood and bones. It isn't in my blood and bones, and it isn't in Cuffy's. Oh, I'll, I'll arrange for you to meet him again. Tonight, in the garden beyond the pine woods. And if it turns out that he is a Canterville, my goodness, maybe you'll be able to go to sleep. Very well, my child. At seven, I gibber in the portrait gallery, following which I practice horrible hallucinations. If these go well, I'll meet thee in the garden shortly before eight. <laughs> Two of the Canterville Ghost, starring Charles Lawton, Margaret O'Brien, and Tom Drake, will continue in a moment. Now, let's listen in on a conversation in one of Hollywood's popular restaurants. Oh, no dessert for me, just coffee. Oh, dear, this new diet. Why, Betty, what are you staring at? That girl at the table in the corner. She has on a rayon print dress just like yours. Where? Oh, oh, she must have bought it last year, too. What do you mean? Yours looks brand new. Oh, heavens no. I got it at the beginning of last summer. Well, you'd never know it. Hers looks much older than that, sort of faded and washed out. Meow. <laughs> she probably did wash it out the wrong way. Better not wash yours, then, if that's what happened. Oh, silly, I've done it lots of times already. No. But they look so different. You must have a knack. No knack, just Lux Flakes. I always use them, and I never had a dress look like that in my life. Shh, not so loud. She's coming this way. Well, it'd do her good to listen. Yes, it would help that girl to know about Lux Flakes. Actual washing tests prove that gentle Lux Care keeps colors lovely up to three times as long. So don't risk wash day methods that are hard on fabrics. Strong soap, hot water, rough handling can make colors look drab far too soon. Let Lux keep your washables lovely longer. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.
Act Two of The Canterville Ghost, starring Charles Lawton as Sir Simon, Margaret O'Brien as Lady Jessica, and Tom Drake as Coffee Williams. Nightfall envelops the massive turrets of Canterville Castle. In a garden beyond the pine woods, Lady Jessica and Cuffy Williams patiently await the ghost of Sir Simon. Suddenly, Jessica sees a faint phosphorescent glow. Her face brightens in response. Here we are, Sir Simon. Here we are. See, I brought him. Hiya, Sir Simon. What's cooking? Cooking? Yeah, I mean, what's all the mystery? Go on, Sir Simon, asking. Uh... Well, uh, uh, tell me, pretty, dost thou by any miracle remember aught of thine ancestors? Ancestors? Well, my old man would never look his up. Said he was afraid one might turn up that ended in the hot seat. <laughs> hot seat? <laughs> Nowadays, England and America have everything in common except, of course, the language. Think back, Cuffy, and try to remember. Well, I had an Aunt Martha. She was a little wacky on the subject. Trace my mother's family tree back to some guy that landed in Massachusetts way, way back. Name was uh, Marmalade. No, no, Mount Morency. No, uh, Marmaduke. That same Marmaduke who fled to Salem after Cromwell scattered the chivalry of England to the four winds? Oh, Sir Simon. You knew him? The son of my brother Anthony. Oh, now, now, take it easy. How do you know it's the same Marmaduke? By the birthmark of the Cantervilles, observe, beneath the ruffle of my collar. Holy cats. A birthmark, same as mine. Now show me thine, please. <laughs> Holy cats, indeed. What did I tell you? Well, I'll be... Well, that makes me your, uh... His nephew. Great, great, great nephew. Aye, thou art a kinsman, a kinsman who can free me from these earthly bonds. Huh? By performing a brave deed in his name. You mean that's all I have to do? Thou art a Canterville, the bluest blood in all broad England. Wilt wear my signet ring and carry it into battle in my behalf? You must say it in Cuffy. He's so old and tired. Okay, it's a deal. The first time they turn me loose on those nuts. I shall be everlastingly grateful, nephew. I too. Thumbs up, Uncle. It's in the bag. Good night, Sir Simon. Good night. And Godspeed, oh, Father, grant that he be not like the others. Hey, fellas, get a load of this. Get a load of what? It's a bullet from the lieutenant. Well, will you listen to this? Because of inefficiency of the platoon billeted at Canterville Castle, cause of which has not yet been satisfactorily explained, all leaves to London are hereby canceled. Oh. I could tell him the cause. Nobody around here can get me sleep. How can we sleep but a ghost in a joint? What gets me is the Louis still thinks we stayed up all night shooting crap. If he'd only seen the hey, ghost. Hey, wait a minute. Perhaps we can take a picture of the ghost. Yeah, with a camera. <laughs> hey, listen, you guys. Why don't you lay off that poor old ghost? He's perfectly harmless. Harmless, huh? He just ruined our weekend. Well, he's just doing his job. A ghost has to groan through keyholes and rattle chains. Why the sudden sympathy? Well, I... have Got a sort of personal interest in him. Gentlemen, I have every reason to believe that I am the long-lost Duke of Canterville. The bluest blood in all England. Oh, the Duke of Canterville yet, eh? Seems to me I seen you in the induction center, buddy. <laughs> if I were you, I'd be careful what I said and did, see? Like what? Well, like loafing on my lawn. So this is your private lawn, huh, Dukey? Yeah. Only you can lie on it? Yeah. Excuse me, your grace... Then why? Hey! <laughs> Sit on him, Eddie, and leave us remove his royal britches. It's an old English custom. Sure. The pants in the Duke. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, cut it off. I got him. Here's his pants. Okay, Dookie, now you can get hey, up. Hey, fellas, look. Here comes a carriage. It's Lady Jessica and a dame. Give me my pants. Get behind us, Cuffy. Gather around him. Jensen's dame's coming. Yeah, okay. Come okay. Come on. Good afternoon. Oh, hello. This is my aunt, Mrs. Calverdine. How do you do? Cuffy, won't you come and meet my aunt? Well, if you don't mind, I'd better meet her from back here. <laughs> How do you do? Why are you hiding behind the others? Oh, oh, it's just sort of a, a military procedure, Lady Jessica. Cuffy, I mean all of you. Auntie said I might invite you to the party in the village this afternoon. Oh, thank you very much. It's only a Saturday at home dance. But there'll be refreshments. Dames, too? I mean, scoits? I mean, girls? Oh, yes. 
And you'll all come? <laughs> Four o'clock at the service center. Don't forget. Oh, hey, 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 fellas, wait! Hey, fellas, wait! My pants! Auntie, look at Cuffy. Well, what sort of a uniform is that? Why, Cuffy's wearing kilt. Oh. It's very nice of you to dance with me, Cuffy. Oh, not at all, my lady. But I'm afraid I'll never learn this kind of dancing. <laughs> Why, you're cutting the rug to ribbons. Cutting the rug? Well, what I mean is you give with a jive. How's it feel to be a slick chick? Fine. Does it always make you so dizzy? <laughs> okay, okay. What do you say to a glass of punch? Hey, Cuffy! Hey, Cuffy, come here! What do you want? Oh, hiya, Sarge. I want you should settle an argument. Let's see what this is all about, Jessica. What kind of an argument? Good afternoon, Mr. Cawthorn. Uh, good afternoon, m'lady. Cuffy, I was telling Mr. Cawthorn the lieutenant thinks it's applesauce about the ghost. Oh? As a native of Canterville, gentlemen, I believe you saw the ghost right enough. But the day will never dawn when he'll run from a human being. Okay, Dookie, you tell him. Dookie? Yeah, Cuffy here. He's the Duke of Canterville. Ain't you, Cuff? Uh, uh, well, in a manner of speaking, <laughs> I'm, uh... <laughs> Well, what's the joke? <laughs> My dear boy, if you wanted to impersonate a British nobleman, you'd never chose a cat of... Uh, uh, oh, uh, uh, Lady Jessica, my profound apologies. And just what's wrong with being a Canterville? Well, since you're so well acquainted with the ghost, sir, I suggest that you ought to keep... Yes, yes, I think I will. Cuffy, please, will you dance with me again? Sure, sure, my lady. Hey, Sir Simon, cut it out, will you? Cut it out. Mm, who's that? It's me, Cuffy. I've been looking for you since midnight. Where have you been? In the North Turret, gibbering. I'm sorry you overheard. I'm in poor voice tonight. Look, if you're supposed to hang around here until a Canterville does a brave deed for you, how come you're still here after 300 years? Oh, I've been waiting for you to ask that. And all that time, someone must have tried to help you. Excuse me, I really must get back to work. Now, wait a minute. Quit stalling. What's wrong with the Cantervilles? If you're trying to hold out on me, I'll... Nay, 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 kinsman. I was merely trying to spare thee. Well, spare me what? Go on, spill it. Mayhap it is better if thine ancestors speak for themselves. Come with me into the portrait gallery. This is the portrait gallery, nephew. Hey, would you look at those pictures? Gaze upon them, our noble family. Sir Gerald de Canterville, proud skipper of the frigate Cranston. When she sank, he was the first to leave the ship. <laughs> Sir Andrew de Canterville, he saw a grenadier lose a finger at Blenheim battle and swooned away. And the blessed twins, Lieutenant Paul, rode the wrong way in the charge of the Light Brigade. <laughs> Lieutenant Peter was ten lengths ahead of him. You mean they were all cowards? All I, of all the heroic families that, that, that for centuries have brightened the glory of England, ours had to be a brood of lily-livered titmice. So that's why you held out. You thought if I found out, I'd be the same way. Oh, nay, nay, not at all. It never entered my mind. Well, then, what are you making all the fuss about? I don't care what the others did. This is Cuppy Williams, see? I verily. Well, all right, then. That's all I wanted to find out. I've got to get back to my bunk before the sergeant misses me. A dear kinsman. Would that I be could believe that he were different. <laughs> This is it. Start loading the trucks, battle equipment. Walker, look after dynamite, plunger boxes, fuse and the wires. We're going over. Okay, Sarge. Williams, take off that ring. It'll shine in the dark. Okay. And don't stick it in your pocket if it's worth anything. Well, it's sort of a family heirloom. You better leave it in the castle. Make it snappy. This is it, huh, Sarge? I had not to tell you this, but you'll know soon enough. We're crossing the channel. We're making a raid on the coast of France. All right, let's go. Start bringing up the trucks. Down the top. You're 
going away. Looks like it, Lady Jessica. Then maybe you'll have a chance to do a brave deed. Maybe you'll save Sir Simon. Listen, lady, I know there's a yellow street down the family back a mile wide. Sir but Simon you, told me. But you're not going to let it worry you. Well, how do you think it makes me feel? Cuffy, you tell me yourself you don't have to be afraid. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Cuffy, I believe in you. And if you have any children of your own, I know they'll believe in you. Children? I haven't any children. I haven't even got a wife. Well, maybe you'll want to marry someday. Somebody. Well, that's the last thing on my mind. Now, lay off. I gotta get going. Cuffy. Oh, Cuffy. Goodbye, Cuffy. Off to the wars. <laughs> Our kinsman hies himself to battle. Oh, Sir Simon. Oh, there, there, there. Now, now, milady. But I'm so worried about Cuffy. Tears never steeled a noble heart to valor. Upon the craven foe, our hero's furious might will... You're worried. How do you think I feel? Our stars, Margaret O'Brien, Charles Lawton, and Tom Drake will continue with the Canterville Ghost in just a moment. Who are you phoning, Sally? I'm getting a weather report. Have some blankets to wash soon. But what's the weather got to do with it? Shh. 5 p.m., temperature 73 degrees. Humidity, 49%. Tonight, clear. Lowest temperature, about 64. Tomorrow, sunny and mild. Highest temperature, about 75 degrees. Gentle to moderate winds. 5 p.m., temperature... Of course, that isn't really how it will be all over the country tomorrow. But in lots of cities, you can get an up-to-the-hour weather report over the phone. Will you please tell me what all this has to do with washing blankets? Why, obviously, you need a good day for it. Not too hot, not too cold, not too windy. Do women wash blankets in the middle of June? That's the best time, before storing them away for the summer. Moths are particular. They don't like clean wool as well as soiled wool. So just whisk your blankets through rich, lukewarm Lux suds. Hold on, Sally. I can't see a woman whisking a, a wet, heavy blanket through anything. Oh, it's easy with Lux. Just make sure you have lots and lots of suds. The suds do the work. Wouldn't a machine help? Sure, if you're lucky enough to have one. But don't run the machine too long. That's as bad as rubbing. Too much agitation mats and shrinks the wool, leaves it harsh and scratchy. Three, three to five minutes is about right for a machine. And use gentle Lux flakes so your blankets will stay soft and fluffy. Be sure to hang the blankets in the shade over two or three parallel lines. That way, the air can circulate through it, and the weight of the water won't pull it out of shape. Thanks for the tip, Sally. You certainly deserve a B.A. for all that advice. Bachelor of Arts? No, Blanket Authority. Now back to Hunt Stromberg and our stars. Act Three of The Canterville Ghost, starring Margaret O'Brien as Lady Jessica, Charles Lawton as Sir Simon, and Tom Drake as Coffee Williams. <laughs> In the black of night, a handful of American rangers have landed somewhere on the coast of France and are creeping stealthily inland. Back in England, the Canterville ghost rages in the portrait gallery, bolstering his anemic hopes by hurling defiance at his ancestors. Ye skulking, cringing, misbegotten peafowls, ye insults painted upon canvas, ye wretched poltroons, not for long now shall I have you leering at me with cynical mockery. Not for long, ye dribble pusses. <laughs> A kinsman worthy of the name now wears my signet ring in battle. Meanwhile, in the cottage on the castle grounds, a sleepless Lady Jessica bolsters her hopes in the way most mortals do. Cuffy Lord, don't let him get hurt. And Uncle Simon, he's such a poor, funny old ghost. And he's so tired. Please let Cuffy do a brave deed for him so he can go to sleep at last. And please let Cuffy come back. Ye gallery of lily-livered rabbits, ye shake-kneed milksops, well mayest thou, thou, thou cower in thy gilded frame, shamed by a colonial, 
by Cuffy Williams. As for thee, fat Algernon, who posed for two years as a dowager to escape fighting a duel, I spit in thine eye. <laughs> <laughs> thee, Sir Percival, who fought through the Thirty Years' War without firing a shot, thee also. <laughs> From yonder bunk in yonder room has risen a lion-hearted kingsman. Yonder bunk. What dreams there in the moonlight? The ring, the signet ring, imbecile, don't, he has forgotten it. I must speak to him before it's too late, before it's too late. Okay, men, you're on enemy territory. And remember, we're here for one purpose only, to blow up the oil refinery. Right. The refinery's got to go at 23.50. Now, check your watches. It's now 23.07. 23.07. Jordan, Baker, William. Yes, yes sir. Get off the road and set up the machine gun in the ditch. If you see any Jerry's, it's up to you to hold them off till the rest of us get back. Check? Check. Right. Check. Jordan, you'll find telephone wise down the road. Cut them and get back to Cuffy and Trigger. I'll get going. Okay, Sarge. Right. See you later, kid. The rest of us will go up this side road. Now, after the explosion, wait till the last man has reached the shore. Then join us. Yes, sir. Okay, and good luck. Cuffy? Yeah? There's a hill right in back of us. Get up there and keep watch. What about you? I'll set up the machine gun. If you see anything, get back here on the double. Okay. <laughs> Who's that? Who's there? Hold her, I'll fire. Spare your bullets, kinsman. It's only I. Oh, what the devil are you doing you here? You forgot the ring. You left it in the castle here, nephew. Get away from me. Put it in thy pocket. Only have it on thy person when the test comes. All right, give it here. Oh, thank you. Thank you, nephew. Uh, thinkest thou the enemy will come this way? That isn't what's worrying you. Oh, plague take it, man. With but half an eye, one can see that thou hast the courage of St. George. Horse feathers, get out of here, will you? I merely thought I could bolster you up in case you were a bit squeamish. I want to be squeamish. Hey, Cuffy. Yeah? You all right? Sure. What time is it? 23.50. Who dost thou converse with? Look, Sir Simon, I thought I told you to scram. Sound. What mighty blast is that? The refinery, they've blown it up. Nephew, look, down yonder road. Motorcycles. Jerry's. Keep a cool head. Keep a cool head. Keep a cool head. Trigger! Trigger! Motorcycles are patrol! Get down here and hold the ammunition belt. Keep a cool head. Keep a cool head. Get, Get out of here. Beat it! Huh? Oh, nothing. Look. Look, Trigger, Jerry's. Lots of them. What are you waiting for? Nothing. Trigger. Trigger, what's the matter? What's the matter? Looks like you've got to take over, Cuffy. Trigger. Cuffy. Get him, Cuffy. Get him. The machine gun. Jordan will be back soon. To hell. Yeah. Yeah, Jordan. Fire, nephew. Fire. Fire. Nephew. Nephew! Blood. Trigger's blood. Nephew, they're drawing closer. Fire! Blood. Cuffy, what's the matter with you? Trigger, Trigger's dead. Get out of there. Give me that machine gun. Give me it, you fool. At ease, men. Well, men, the colonel's compliments, and after last night's raid, he wants me to tell you we're the best so-and-so platoon in the whole outfit. <laughs> But I'm not satisfied. So we're going to take a little jaunt into these woods and iron out the mistakes we made right now. Follow him. Williams. Uh, yes, sir. Here a minute. Yes, sir. All right, Fritz. Williams, I've discussed your case with the colonel. We, uh, we both considered what happened last night, and he feels that we have no alternative but to transfer you back to your old outfit. Yes, sir. Line up, Fritz. Now, remember, Williams, there are many men who may be psychologically unfit for combat who can still perform useful roles in service. Now, pack up your things. I'll arrange for your transfer when we get back from maneuvers. All right. Thank you, sir. Good luck, Williams. Yeah, the platoon is formed. All right, Sergeant. Left. Face. Right shoulder. Turn. Forward. Turn. Cuffy, Cuffy, I've been expecting you all morning. What happened? Oh, you'd better run along home, lady. I've got to go in and pack. You're going away? Yeah. Oh, Cuffy. That's right. Look at me. I'm a cannibal, all right. Just as cowardly as the rest of them. Don't say that. You're not a coward. 
You're brave. I know it. I know it. All right, lady, have it your own way. Coffee. I'm sorry it turned out like this. Goodbye, lady. Oh, coffee. <laughs> Wretched me that I should have pinned my faith again upon a Canterville. Oh, pipe down, Sir Simon, will you? And get down off that chandelier. It makes me nervous. <laughs> nervous, I. That I well believe. Oh, shut up. Get on. I've got to pack. Pack, then, and leave me to my fate. Thou who hast raised my hopes only to dash them like a robin on a rock of granite. Cuffy, Cuffy. Oh, my lady, you can't come in here. I know it's your castle, but... Well, this is barracks. Cubby, there's a parachute. I saw it coming down. Parachute? parachute? It'd be a Nazi came down in it. Oh, Cubby, what'll we do? Well, where did you see it? On this side of the stone bridge. Well, where is the stone bridge? Do you know the old side road? No. Then I'll take you there. I know a shortcut. All right, come on. No, 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 wait. Where's my rifle? All right, come on. We'll grab it. Jeez, hurry. There, there it is, Cuffy. The parachute. Yeah, caught in a tree. I don't see anybody, but you'd better stay here. I'm going to look around. Duck down in the jeep. Keep down now. Cuffy, look over there. Huh? All through our woods, those men, who are they? Oh, don't worry about them. They're rangers. Maneuvers. Yeah, that's where I'd be if I hadn't... Cuffy, what is it? In the bushes. A parachute mine, a bomb, a blockbuster. Oh, let's get out of here, lady. If that thing goes off, it'll kill every living thing within a half a mile. We gotta get... Oh, the rangers. They're scattered all through the woods. They'll be killed. Get back to the castle. Quick, run. Aren't you coming? No, I've got to drag it away with a jeep. Dump it over the cliff. Get going. Run now. Run. Hide in the cellar. Run! Lady Jessica? Oh, Uncle Simon. Where's Cuffy? Has he encountered the enemy? Oh, no. Cuffy's moving the blockbuster. He's doing the bravest deed there ever was. Gad, darest I believe again? Where? This way, down through here. Oh. There. Oh, save thy breath, child. Look to his quaking knees, his eyes that tremble with the ague, his hand that shrinks from contact with yon lethal instrument, the portrait of a Canterville. No, Uncle, no. Cuffy, Cuffy. Cuffy, you're not afraid. You're not. I... I can't. I can't touch it. There's a timer on it. The least little jar would set a ticking. I... Well... Cuffy, you were doing a brave deed. Don't you see? You can do it. You don't have to be afraid because you're a Canterville. Look, Cuffy, I'm not afraid of the bomb. Look, Cuffy, I'm kicking it. Look, Cuffy, look, I'm not afraid. That sounds... It's ticking. You started it ticking. Okay, lady... Thanks for the lesson. I'm all right now. You run for it. Go on, get out of here. This thing goes off in 60 seconds. Oh, Cuffy. Hurry, I'm dragging this thing out of here. Go on, get out of my way, my lady. Run for it. Careful, nephew, careful. Hop in, Uncle. Keep your eye on the tow chain. Let me know if it slips. Well, we're out of the underbrush. Hold on now. Oops. Yes. Nephew, look out, the rangers. Hey, you rangers, run for your lives. I got a blockbuster on here. A time bomb. Run, blockbuster. Oops. Ouch. Where are we going, nephew? To the cliff. We'll dump it in the ravine if we get that far. How many more seconds? I don't know, maybe 20. Five, six, seven, eight, whoop, ten, eleven. There's a ravine. We better jump. Let the jeep take it over. There she goes! Well, we made it. 27, 28, 29, 30. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. Say, what's all this hooey about ticking? Oh, it's a dud. We never were in any danger. All that work for... Jessica, dear, thank goodness you're all right. It, it must have been an air raid. No, it was Cuffy. Cuffy? Near the stone bridge. 
A bomb from a parachute. Cubby blew it up. Cubby saved everyone. And if Cubby blew it up, then he's blowing up too. Roll out the barrels. We'll have a barrel of fun. Roll out the barrels. We've got the blues on the run. Cubby, Cubby. Ring out a song of good cheer. Now's the time to roll the barrels. For the gang's all here. Cuffy, Cuffy, you're alive. What happened? Happened? I just dumped that cockeyed thing right into the ravine. Like St. George slaying the cockeyed dragon. What's your Simon? What, child? If Cuffy's a cannibal, and if Cuffy did a brave deed for you, then why are you still here? Hmm? Yeah. Why aren't you in the garden beyond the pine woods? Yea, verily. Why not? Well, if you're going, you'd better hurry up. Here come the rangers. Father! Father! Why am I still in mortal coils? Look! Uncle Simon's glowing. Hey, Scott! Lieutenant, look! The glow! Thank you, nephew. Thank you, niece. Farewell. He's gone. Did you see that, Lieutenant? Yeah, that's what we've been trying to... T hey, Lieutenant! Hey, guys, the Louis has fainted. Here it is, Uncle Simon's grave. The garden beyond the pine woods. It looks mighty restful here. Isn't it nice that he can have a little plot to call his own and a headstone of his own, too? Well, that was the ranger's idea. We had it inscribed, see? Sir Simon de Canterville, 1603, 1943. Gee, that's a long time to go without sleep. Yes, but you nearly always have to wait for something that you want very much, Cuffy. How old are you? How old? Why? I shall be eight in May. Our stars, Charles Lawton, Margaret O'Brien, and Tom Drake, return for their curtain calls in just a moment. Meanwhile, here are Patty and Kay planning their vacation. Oh, I don't think you'd like that place, Patty, even if it is so nearby. I was there last summer, and it was awfully noisy. Oh, but it sounds good. Beach, tennis, dancing every night. Well, that's just the trouble. It's right near a Coast Guard station, and the boys come over to the dances. And sometimes everybody ends up singing. It's impossible to get any sleep. <laughs> Why, Kay, you sound like an old fuss budget. I thought you liked dancing. Well, well, there were more girls than fellows, and... Well, a little thing like that shouldn't stop a cute gal like you, unless... What? Oh, Skip it, I... I forgot what I was going to say. Patty Have you seen the new movie at Proctor's? Patty didn't forget what she had in mind, but how could she tell Kay what she was really thinking? Kay's cute enough to get any man she wants. If only she were as sweet and fresh as she looks. But you just can't tell even your best friend that she's careless about daintiness. If I could only give her a hint about luxing under things after every wearing, luxing her dresses and blouses often. If I could tell her how fresh and sweet it leaves them, then she wouldn't risk offending. She'd have all the fun she deserves. Gentle Lux Care does protect daintiness, and it's kind to fabrics, too. Keeps lovely underthings new-looking three times as long. Don't use hot water, strong soap, or handle nice things roughly. That kind of treatment makes them look faded and drab far too soon. Lux is thrifty care. Here's Hunt Stromberg and our stars. Back to our footlights come Margaret O'Brien and Tom Drake, along with the ex-phantom of our cast, Charles Lawton, now very much in the flesh. Must you put it quite that way, very much in the flesh? I think well, actually, Charles, you look as if you'd lost a little weight. <laughs> lost a little weight? No, no, it's around here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Lawton, you carried plenty of weight as a ghost, didn't he, Margaret? Mr. Lawton's my favorite ghost. Have you ever met a real ghost, Margaret? No, but I'd like to. I think you would, Margaret. There's no reasons why ghosts shouldn't be highly useful citizens. <laughs> But rather expendable in wartime, wouldn't you say, Mr. Lawton? No, there might be lots of useful things a ghost could do in wartime, frighten the enemy. Give a pint of blood to the Red Cross? Well, I'm not so sure of that. Ghosts haven't much to spare. <laughs> well, they could give their clanking chains and creaking armor to the scrap drive. 
Maybe they could sell war bonds. Right, Margaret. They could promote the sale of war bonds over a ghost-to-ghost -ghost network. <laughs> Wouch. <laughs> or indirectly by haunting the conscience of individuals so chicken-hearted as to not to buy their fullest share. Do you buy war bonds, Margaret? That's how I spend all my money. Well, you couldn't find a better way to spend it. And if you go to see Tom Drake in Metro Goldwyn Mayer's This Man's Navy, you'll get an idea of where your money's going in building the greatest navy in the world, about to meet its greatest test in history. Well, I don't think any of us need too much persuading to buy war bonds, Mr. Stromberg. Uh, tell us, what are you going to have in this theater next week? Next Monday night, we bring you one of the most talked-of dramas of the year, The Woman in the Window, starring Edward G. Robinson, Joan Bennett, and Dan Durier. If you ever felt sympathy for a murderer, you will in this gripping story of a man who is trapped to kill in self-defense and teams with a woman to conceal their crime from the police. Well, for sheer suspense, I don't think I know any more exciting play than the woman in the window. We'll be listening, Mr. Stromberg. Good night. Good night. Good night, Hi. Margaret. All our thanks. <laughs> our sponsors, the makers of Lux Lake, Join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Edward G. Robinson, Joan Bennett, and Dan Durier in The Woman in the Window. This is Hunt Stromberg saying good night from Hollywood. <laughs> the Canterville Ghost was presented through the courtesy of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the Technicolor musical Anchors Away. Hunt Stromberg's next picture will be Young Widow, starring Jane Russell. Charles Lawton will soon be seen in the Benedict Boges picture, Captain Kidd. Heard in tonight's cast were Eric Snowden, Boyd Davis, Claire Verdera, Ed Emerson, Gerald Moore, Gloria Gordon, Eddie Marr, Clifton Young, Robert Cole, Charles Seal, and Norman Field. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This program is broadcast to our fighting forces overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. And this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear The Woman in the Window with Edward G. Robinson, Joan Bennett, and Dan Duryea.